Black Panther is still hanging tough. Is Kenya Moore really pregnant? Students march for change. Rihanna snaps back at the Snapchat company. Rapper 21 Savage makes a deposit. And we have our photo of the week and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 on 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. Hey, girl. Yes, this is time. Yeah. Marvel's blockbuster. Did you yes. see Black Panther? Yes, I did. Did you see Black Panther? Did you guys see Black Panther? I'm sure everybody at home is like, yes. Wakanda forever. Or oh, this. this is, look, what about the... Oh, okay. yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it continues to maze the financial yes, world and the world yes. record-breaking billion dollars worldwide. That mm. is amazing. That is amazing. So the Black Pan Panther has become the first film since 2000 Avatar to top the weekend's box office five straight weeks in a row. By the time this air, it'll be six straight weeks in a row. You know what? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it is amazing, amazing movie. And more good news, LVMH, the company behind Louis Vuitton, oh, yeah, has announced it's Can 20. Can I say? No. Ha, ha, mm -hmm. way. Okay. It's 2018 LVMH prize, and two black fashion designers have made the cut among nine. So the fashion labels are a cold wall headed by Samuel Ross, okay. who's from London originally, mm -hmm. and gender fluid fashion label Botter, headed by Rushemi Botter who's originally from Curaçao. Oh, nice. And his co-designer, Lisa Herabrug, please excuse me if I'm mispronouncing her name, I hope I'm not, but she is Dominican. Um, the winner will receive 300,000 euros, which is... That's like more, in, but euros is more in dollars. Yes. Right? Wow, it's well, like $500,000. Well, yeah. No, it's 370,000. Dollars. Like US dollars, I mean. No, it's 370,000 US dollars at this point. Oh, US yeah. dollars. I yeah, yeah. said in euros. Okay. Yeah, so 300,000 euros, 370,000 in dollars. Oh, okay. And they will also receive a year. This is the kicker. I'm like, a year of mentorship from executives at LVMH. That's amazing. And Louis bags, probably like tons of Louis bags. Congratulations <laughs> to the winners. <laughs> the winners will be announced on June. So according to Love B. Scott, Kenya Moore from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, mm -hmm. get this guys, she's pregnant. But <gasps> I mean, she's been wanting to be pregnant for a long time, so she I'ma think that those eggs are hard boiled <laughs> and I just don't believe it. I, I need to you see said the baby bump. Wouldn't it be like dis disintegrated or something? Mm -hmm. You said hard Duh. <laughs> But I don't have any powder to do. <laughs> I don't have any powder. But so okay. it seemed like at the Real Housewives of Atlanta at the re reunion, only Cynthia, Cynthia seemed to believe her. So, but Cynthia believes a lot of stuff. So we, we have yeah, to keep Cynthia, watching. sweet Cynthia, yeah. You know, everyone, that's their little guilty prep pleasure. So l let's keep watching and see if we see a baby bump. You know she's married to the guy that owns Soko here in BK. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, oh. She's there sometimes. Oh, you don't follow her on social media. No. Yeah, yeah. The guy that owns Soko is married to Kenya Moore. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's his baby? If it's really I, real? Okay. If it is a baby, I hope it was his. Like. Oh! <laughs> shots so shady. Look no, at the shade. Let's turn up the not. lights. Look at the shade. Shade. I'm too dark shade. skinned. If you turn up the lights, I'll be missing. <laughs> A A P B. Don't turn on no lights. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in case you missed it, rapper 21 Savage was on the Ellen DeGeneres show, and he revealed that he had partnered with Get Schooled, mm -hmm. uh, a nonprofit that helps break down the detailed process that many students go through in order to um, pay for financial aid or receive financial aid. So 21 Savage presented a $21,000 check to the 21 Savage bank account campaign. Oh, no. True to his name, he'll open 21 bank accounts for 21 kids and deposit $1,000 in each one of their bank accounts. That's really nice. Yeah. Well, good for you, 21 yeah. Savage. The bank account, you have that bank account. So yeah, he's keeping it real. So under doctor's orders, mm -hmm. re, re, the original re, re, Aretha Franklin. Oh, Lord. I'm going to be like, who? Rihanna? What? See what I mean? You, you think you millennials think you can invent no, no. something. Riri is Aretha no. Franklin, Rihanna. Sit down. So she had to cancel some of her headlining tours for 2018 mm -hmm. because under doctor's orders. Because I saw a picture of her on social media several months ago, and she yeah. had, like, some money in her hand. 
But everybody was focused on how skinny she was. And they were like, what's wrong? And, you know, they had to take it down because she didn't like the picture. So I hope she's OK. Was it all sagged down? We'll have a, we'll have a picture below. You of, better bow of, down of the to original the queen. Riri. Anyway, we wish her well. Hope she gets well soon. Franklin is a legend, man. Aretha Franklin <laughs> She's is a off legend. Limits. We cannot make fun of her. So Big Sean, right? Mm -hmm. I have like a little story about Big Sean, guys. Okay, so there's like these rumors swirling around that Big Sean was cheating on his girlfriend. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so what's her name? Uh, jo Janae Iko. Janae Iko. Y'all know that I'm um phonetically challenged. <laughs> right. So anyway, <laughs> like in 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 millennial fashion, he goes to his his Instagram <laughs> hashtag baby I'm sorry hashtag oh, you my rider what do he say <laughs> partner in crime hashtag happy birthday hashtag 88 I didn't even know what 88 was because I'm oldest I don't oh, know what no, and we need a little young whippersnapper kids to say I think that's no. her birthday 88 so I guess he's out of the doghouse all these guys have to do now is tweet something listen no she's right she's riding with him too apparently so hey if you know if she what? doesn't believe the rumors, hey. You know who else did that? Uh, DJ Envy on uh, 105. Yeah. He he got caught cheating with uh, Erica Mendez. Oh, Mendes. really? Yeah. And then he had to do an apology, but he did it on the radio. And his wife forgave him, so I guess that's the new way to do it. I, mm -hmm. So when does Wendy Williams' man going to come through and say? I think you got to be somebody first. See, Big Sean is <laughs> Oh, then, the shade. I'm turning oh. off the lights again. <laughs> the shade. I'm sorry, Kevin Hunter. <laughs> Don't come from my edges. They ain't taking so long to grow back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with what's popping. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now, what's the 411 in business of entertainment? Yes, and we are joined by Keisha Wilson from What's the 411 Sports. Welcome. Hey, Thank you. Keisha. Hey. <laughs> hey. Every girl got a friend named Keisha. <laughs> On the Unica. Okay, ABC, <laughs> which is owned by Disney, the same company that distributed Black Panther, which we were talking about earlier. Yes. Oh, flat. Okay. <laughs> oh, why do you do like that? Because I like that. Well, you got to do it like that. I'm sure you. You don't do but that. But that's not in the movie, though. But I. It is, but they so. understand. Not you know what I'm saying? You know no, they did. They did like that. Oh, we're but sorry. She was <laughs> you know what? Listen, I'm gonna do. Well, no, but kind why? Of how I but why'd you do it like that? Because I like that. But why'd you do that? It feels right. What the hell happened with the Wakanda? Yeah, it was not had nothing to do with Wakanda, but um, it turns out that um, ABC actually <laughs> shelved an episode of Blackish um, that explained the issue of kneeling in the NFL, and they cited creative differences. Well, the Grio had this great article which said, you know, the five reasons that you know ABC should actually air the cancel Blackish episode, and one of the reasons was that they said that the kneeling issue had been hijacked which I think it has, and that ABC should not allow the NFL to dictate art on its network. So what do you ladies think? You wanna go? Well, okay, so uh, on What's the 401 Sports, we covered the kneeling protest and the effects and what the NFL should have done, what they shouldn't have done, and Donald Trump in the mix and all that stuff. So um, there is a relationship between ABC and ESPN. Uh, who are owned, both owned by Walt Disney. And one thing that's happening at ESPN is that they're in a crossroads of where they're gonna go in the direction of their network. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be a shift of moving maybe away from the politics part because um, as you may have known, Jamel Hill, who was right. um, mm -hmm. a, a writer, I think she's, she's now doing some writing. She was an on-air personality. Yeah. Uh, she got in trouble a, a couple times for some of the tweets that she sent that were politically charged. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter, though, as no. a public yeah, yeah, she's figure. a public, so mm -hmm. you, she's representing ESPN basically at all times. And right. she mentioned something and they felt it was incendiary and they suspended her for uh, a week. Yeah, we covered that. Remember? Yeah, we talked, oh, we definitely yeah. talked about it on the and show. And so yeah. now, you know, then you've got, there were some other on-air personalities. There was Kurt Schilling that comes to mind who 
tweeted stuff that was in response to something that political was going on mm. in response to the North Carolina bathroom law. But how, what is, how does that have anything to do with... Well, it's, you know, it politics is one of those hot button issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very, it people are impassioned about it. Right. And it's, okay, where do you draw the line as a network? Do you, you have Republican um, watchers, viewers, right. you have Democratic reviewers. Right. So where do you, where do you go? Do you, if you lean more towards one side, you're alienating one side. The show was more blackish. Yeah, though, right? yeah, so that's, no, what, I, right, yeah, that's what I was up. about to say. Now, right, because now, so ESPN, right, really they're supposed to be talking about sports. But then right. there's also there's that time where sports and politics and mix. mix. But they mix, mix, but I mean they can still lean more towards sports. Blackish is a show that's supposed to be reflective of the black experience. Right. And I the agree. kneeling is a part of our black experience. Right. That's just now, how I see that. Who are the advertisers during this show? When oh. you watch Blackish, Middle I guess who are, Middle America, who are the, all who are the advertisers of, who. Who do yeah. you normally see commercials oh, no, no. on? Pepsi, oh. McDonald's, all, oh, the, all yeah. the major well, players. See, that's money. So now ESPN is, um, I'll, I'll go away from ESPN because mm -hmm. we're talking about a show that's on ABC. Mm -hmm. ABC is a business. Right. If you start go airing content that's going to affect that dollars coming in, that's when they're going to start pulling back. And while, yes, it's an important issue. Something. We're talking about we're not talking about brick tv we're talking about abc as uh -huh. a network and they're not hurting for money and with the blackage show they did have that that um the show about um police, the brutality, police brutality and all that yeah so the police brutality they did that show and they did it very very well i just think that they already drew the line and the line was they were going to go there produce yeah. Show, sh content that's going to be reflective of the black experience. You said something about the um, slavery, right? They yeah, they did. They this covered slavery. So if you're going to cover slavery, well. and you're going to, I mean, but, but she's making a good point. There though. are like, you know, and, and this was a hot button topic. This was something that really had advertisers in some places threatening not to uh, have business relationships with the NFL. And if, if ABC feels like some of their big dollar sponsors, like a Pepsi, a McDonald's, a Burger King, are going to start pulling their dollars, they're, they're going to start to rethink about you Which know, is at topics like that. Exactly. Now, p police brutality, yes, it was an important topic. People were in passion, but I don't remember it, it having this kind of polarizing um, reaction as this these protests right. I smell did. Trump. So, I smell Trump. You know, yeah. like the stuff that he like <laughs> is totally against. Pe like big business really backs him just on the law. That's no, but I he's feel. the one. He's part of the reason why it was politicized in the way that it was in the first place. The whole reason why people were like, "Oh my God, why sh why should they kneel?" This means that they're disrespecting our flag and disrespecting it our wasn't military. Our flag it had ever nothing do to do with that. It right. never had anything to do with that. So that's a big reason it's just why a smoke and it's, mirror it's, it's, it's issue turned was that way. Anyway. In, from the beginning, uh, because people thought of it as an attack on American values and flags and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. then, right then and there, it was already hijacked. And then Donald Trump injected himself further hijacking yeah. and muddying the issue so um just going yeah, back the to the black right yeah. This, yeah remember that uh, you know, it's just going back to Get black back to work and it's, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah i think it's yeah. it's probably more of a business decision than so keisha what you're saying is it's not realistic basically they can't just go their own way and say you know what you know art is art we're just gonna like you know air what we want to air they have to think about yeah, yeah, you know, the, the you have to think about the bottom it. line you know you want to give artists their creative the creative leeway to do something but mm -hmm. there's there's a line there's a line right. and if right. you want to do produce your own content and have it the way you want to you have to have more ownership of it and well, well, well look yes. <laughs> well, look at this like okay so and a billion dollars off from a movie black people right you can mm -hmm. create your a real network with real content that you want to and then support that Right, right, right. Yeah, there's a really. You talk well, about this so really, many really, times. Really, really I mean, forever. I think since this show has started, we've been talking about black people need to put their dollars, you know, in But I think that when they see it, right, then they could be it. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that to mess with Keisha. <laughs> She's like, that's not the way it goes. <laughs> I guess I we're shimmying in, in Wakanda. I would do like this. We can just vote, you know, we're going to just... I, I mean, I don't know. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Now, what's popping with young people? Yeah. Young people are standing up. Yes, they are. They are. So, um, after the aftermath of the shooting, the shooting rampage at Marjorie Stoneman um, Douglas High School, right, mm -hmm. down in uh, Parkland, Florida, which was, oh my God, our hearts and uh, prayers go out to the families. We, we really do. Right. But the students are standing up in mm -hmm. activism. They're mm -hmm. like, you know what, we're going to be safe in these schools. We're not just going to gun laws they're coming after the gun laws right. like we've never seen anything like this in decades this is so exciting right right so um the, the walkouts across the country yes across definitely. the country and people were like posting i support my child in this so that's like hashtag amazing. enough mm -hmm. so the, we have the women's movement now we have the young movement like the conservatives are just running scared i think at this point i agree i don't think it's going to go back to just being business as usual you could even see in the way that they've responded to the latest shooting right yeah. usually we have the same cycle all oh, shooting happens you know people cry oh you know thoughts and prayers blah 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 and then right back to normal yeah and mm -hmm. this time these kids have really kept this in the the front of the lens they've they've kept up the pressure on these politicians they called out marco rubio and like yeah, a, an open it. forum you mm -hmm. know what i mean they're really doing things i mean like you said they had the, the walkout like mm -hmm. a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um and it's been great it's been you know me it's it's been really <laughs> you know um she it's, power to the people listen mm -hmm. I, you know, listen i just i love activism so i like seeing you know young people, everybody really fighting for, you know, their life, their right to be. I mean, that's really important. But what was also interesting is when they had that, that walkout a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, mm -hmm. black students were like, you know what? You know, we've been out here fighting gun violence and fighting. Yeah, we've been making sure that mm -hmm. Right, you know, gun violence in our communities, which they always say black on black crime, but mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and also, you know, talking about police brutality. They, so they use that opportunity to call attention to that as well. They're like, right. we are here marching definitely for the Parkland students. Our hearts go out to them. But we're also marching to make what sure that us? in our communities as well that gun violence stops and goes down and that people don't forget that we have a voice too. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's important. Um, so what do you think about the, the Me Too movement? Do you think that's going <laughs> to change the everything Me too? too? The Me or Too? The Me Too, yeah, the, the women's movement. Oh, I, I was like, wait, we were talking about the young people. But we're, no, okay. we're talking about both. Well, both. Okay. <laughs> well I, I mean, I, I agree with you, Kizzy, that activism on the part of young people is really encouraging to see, especially in this day and age where, you know, the, the millennials seem to have this, Mm, idea of everything's about me, me, no, me. No, but they We're are in activists. No, they're wait, wait, wait. Up. Let me finish. Let okay. me finish. Um, <laughs> and that there is this look at me she moment with the Shady. with the Instagram, with the Shady. Twitter, the Facebook. Everything is about me, me, me. But it's great to see them take that and move it outwards and say, yeah, look at me, but look at us fighting for something that matters, our safety. The um the women's movement like it's just really nice to see that they can uh think of others as well and normally that's where things start with like the young people they always say the children are the future you know this is their this is their moment to really take hold of that and really move forward and um i love how you know the black youth also were like hey mm -hmm. don't forget about us because our voices right. tend to get f forgotten and put in the in the back burner and if there's could be a marriage between both movements where you the know the Me Too movement and the young people's movement. No, no, the young people who are now marching for gun violence, the the white youth and the black youth who can well, I have think that's oh, what's happening. Oh, you mean yeah, yeah. You know, no, have it one is, it is voice. It, oh, and that's, that's what it is. Like, that's I think that's great, is. and I think that's what this country actually needs to right. see. Um, um, so that's actually going to be what advances it, I think. I don't yeah. think if it was just black people saying, hey, you know, gun no. violence, I don't think they would have gotten the same platform, and that's sad. You definitely need uh, right. So, yeah, <laughs> but I'm glad that there is a groundswell of support. You know, all races and ethnicities are coming together and saying, enough, hashtag enough. And, yes, women are taking over. Give us our money. No, it was everything. Stop, not, stop, get your money. Stop. Let you know. If they the could dismantle the NRA's hold on politics... But they, really, but, but they have to it's loosen be really their hold of the NRA's hold on 
corporations. You know what I'm trying to say? Like the corporations are still you know well, you well no they lost a lot of people they, they lost a lot with the lobby and they lost they lost sponsorship they did. Delta yeah. was a big one on, yeah. Yeah. On, on set though in the beginning you'll see you have to just watch it what people what what companies do a lot oftentimes is they they pull out a, you know initially and then they just funnel the money back in come on come well, on well i it's know the what, NRA. what they it is, oh, it's definitely the NRA. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about mm -hmm. that. But the politicians are in the pockets of the mm -hmm. NRA. That is the mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. You have to loosen that stranglehold. Recently, an advertisement on Snapchat for a game called Would You Rather asked users, Would you rather slap Rihanna or punch Chris Brown? Oh, that yes or no thing? Yes. Oh, okay. And it appeared to make light of the infamous domestic violence incident between Rihanna and Chris Brown back in 2009. Uh -huh. So after people on social media, including activists, we're talking about activists, Brittany Packnett, um, she's an activist, and, and Chelsea Clinton slammed the ad saying it was incredibly awful and gross, Snapchat apologized like they do, right? Rihanna was not having it. She said on Instagram, now Snapchat. I know you already know you ain't my fave app out there, but I'm just trying to figure out what the point was with this mess. I'd love to call it ignorance, but I know you ain't that dumb. You spent money to animate something that would intentionally bring shame to domestic violence victims and made a joke of it. This isn't about my personal feelings because I don't have much of them, but all the women, children, and men that have been victims of domestic violence in the past, and especially the ones who haven't made it out yet, you let us down. Shame on you. Throw the whole app apology away. So. Boom. Okay. Yeah. So, bam. All all mic drops. All I'm going to say yeah. is this. Snapchat. What you probably should do. What you probably should do. Snapchat. Is uh, donate some money to a local domestic violence shelter. They should probably get rid of the executives. Because this had to be green lighted. Like you just. That's can't what just, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to put this poll on here and it's right. happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This had to go through some approval channels. Those people need to be investigated and get and suspended or get out because how tone deaf can you be? Right. And it's tone deaf and just common sense wise that like, this is not a funny right. matter. Exactly. And then just in the larger scale of things, you're just completely tone deaf. How many, but you me never know with the, with, social media right Cer certain things are just outlandish and it just goes and you're like how could this be how could this be cool and then other things they get flagged if okay Rihanna but that didn't say that if Rihanna didn't say anything like would this have this kind of backlash if she just kind of like let it go but you're sometimes. raising a good point like why is it that in some cases they wouldn't say something and mm -hmm. when it comes to black women they're the ones that get all the punchlines and nonsense thrown at them. Like, why, why, why is that? I wasn't saying that, but okay. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you're, you can't even <laughs> no, into that. No, I was just saying, I was talking about social media on the whole. Like, it's just, it's very inconsistent, you know? Mm -hmm. it, and I don't know. I don't know. But I just feel like this is executives making this kind of decision. Because I agree with you. There are some things. Well, like, the executives are 23 year old kids. Like, you know, when it's t when we're talking about <laughs> Snapchat. You know what I mean? Because that's who are they making know. the decisions because they need to keep the post, you know, the 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 app as you know youthful as possible. You don't think? No. No, I think there are oh, other no. people behind no. that for no. sure. <laughs> okay. But uh, my question is though, why why is it okay? Why is it okay for black women to kind of be made into punchlines? It's like never why? okay. Yeah. But it, we it, just seem companies to, think for whatever reason, be. black women seem to carry a lot of burdens of society. society. <laughs> and mm. unfortunately, it's a, it's a way of life. It's a fact of life. I want it to change. I hope mm. that yeah. I can see it change in my lifetime. And maybe, you know, the, the youth movement will... But that's why I feel like I'm not a feminist. Too. Because I just kind of like feel like the feminist movement is a white lady movement. I just feel that way. And I think that we, at the end of it, it's always going to line up where we still get the short end of the stick. That's how I feel. But we have to we have to change that then. You have to fight. We have to so fight which, that. So who are we fighting though? Men? Everyone. No, we're women. fighting against the system that makes our oppression possible. It's not just men specifically. Because some women are co-signing that too, for whatever reason. Like they voted for Trump. So, when he said, all you got to do is just grab him by the... Doop, doop. <laughs> right? Sometimes if you do grab somebody. Onika. Oh, Onika. Oh, oh, no. I'm saying live a little, live no. a little, lady. You know, oh, good day. Good day. What's next? 
Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, just, we just need to end on that. I know. <laughs> Let's zoom in on that. Would you hang out with your ex? Well, see. Would that, you, was, that, was, that segue was... Would you hang out with your ex? Would you hang out with your ex? It depends on which one. <laughs> okay. The one you love, like the real ex, not the one that just was a fake ex. Yes. You would hang out? Yes. Would you hang I out with your ex? Yeah. Would yeah. you hang, would you do it on the beach? Mm. I'm not really a I beach would, person. <laughs> my ex would drown me out. <laughs> so, would I you hang so. out with your ex on the beach on television? Like if they... Oh no, it. that is awkward as hell. No, is no, there no, prize no, money? no, no. <laughs> I, no, there isn't. But it's the premise of this well, new no, TV there's no prize show money. By, on MTV. It's called X on the Beach. But um, boom. But what's the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. Wow. wow. What, what's, well, what's the no. point of it? Like, what do you do? Well, is dating it like naked. Get... It's the same premise as dating. What's the, what's the point of it? Yeah, naked and afraid and stuff. <laughs> so at least you're trying to get out of the jungle naked. <laughs> But this one, what are you just oh doing? God. I feel like you could just do this at the Starbucks. Meet up with your ex at the Starbucks. But it's sexier on the beach. That's why I actually sex, sex on, on the, the beach. beach. Ha, 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 ha. And they want it in Miami. Like, and they want, and, not. And, and they want, and they want the lady in a bikini. Like, that's what it really is. Right. Oh. Middle-aged oh. men want to just watch young girls in a bikini so they just get a premise and say, who's oh going to watch God. this? But MTV, they're not going to be watching MTV. This no. is for, no, no like, not MTV. The same ladies. Give us seen. another real world or something. Like, this is nonsense. <laughs> so you are no. I'm a no. I'm a no because I, I know my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we broke up, Ray Ray. <laughs> you didn't grab me by the <laughs> oh, 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 oh. He did actually. Oh, did. Okay. That was not the problem. Oh, oh. We'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> and our photo of the week is of the students from Broward County, Florida, protesting for gun control. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Okay, so this week we're having a little fun with our motivational quote. So, the quote is. If your girlfriend is always looking good, but you know perfectly well that you haven't contributed anything towards that, my brother, you are no different from a security man guarding a bank. All right. The quotes all day is absolutely Get unknown, but <laughs> we found it on the Facebook page of Hot 97.3 Radio in Tanzania. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Guys, we had a good time. <laughs> we, I, had, I, I enjoyed y'all today. That's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the Fourth One? Get Smart to us for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, What's the 411.com. Right, and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. And what else? We can download that iTunes, Stitcher, and tune in. Yes, our tune in is getting tuned up. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> She's a comedian, y'all. Um, I'm Kizzy Cox, and I'm half of Onika McLean and Keisha Wilson. Thank you for watching What's the 411. Until next time.